Of this, be sure. You don't find a good life. You make it. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we learn how to master your habits and take control of your life from our friends at Pickup Limes. Enjoy. I'm someone who really believes in the power of habit, and I know many of you feel the same way. One of my favorite quotes, actually, is by Aristotle when he said that we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. So today, that's what we're going to delve into, how to create new healthy habits and how to break old ones. Q, routine, reward. This is the simple formula that was outlined in Charles Duhigg's best-selling book, The Power of Habit. Now, let me break it down a little bit. The cue is the part that triggers the response. So for example, hearing your phone vibrate would be a cue. The routine is the response part, usually the thing we perform on autopilot. In this case, that would be checking our phone. And the reward is what gives you those feel-good feelings. In this case, it might be distraction from work or seeing that someone commented or liked your most recent post. Cue, routine, reward, pretty simple formula. So here's the thing, if you want to establish an entirely new habit, you need to come up with a cue first. Otherwise, you're not gonna know when to act and even when you do act, it changes so much from day to day that the habits don't tend to stick. So it's not enough to say, I wanna drink more water. You have to come up with a cue first, which in this case could be putting a cup of water out on the desk in front of you where you're working. That way, every time you see it, it's a reminder to pick up that cup and start sipping. Establishing a cue is critical to creating new habits. Eventually, the routine part is gonna be performed on autopilot, but in the beginning, you are gonna have to work for it a little bit. So here's a tip that might help. Remember that our brains are always trying to save energy. So if you're someone who wants to pick up the new habit of going for a run every morning, it can really help if the night before you set out your clothes and your shoes. Not only does it act as a cue when you see it, but it also saves you those two minutes in the morning. If you're someone who also wants to decrease the amount of junk food that you eat, it can help then if you have other more wholesome snack choices readily on hand, like some pre-cut up fruit or some pre-made wholesome cookies. Decreasing the effort required to take action can really help that new habit stick. Before you even try setting up a new habit though, you need to know why you're doing it. In other words, what is your why power? I think a lot of the times people don't pick up new habits or change old ones because the reward just isn't satisfying enough. So identify a realistic and worthy reward, whether it's an endorphin rush after exercising or improved mental concentration after you've had a midday snack or a positive and happy feeling that you get after writing in your gratitude journal. Eventually, you're gonna start to crave this reward as soon as you see the cue and that's how you know the habits are starting to stick. So we've chatted now about creating new habits, but what about breaking the old routines that we could do without? Well, there's a well-developed strategy that might help, and it's really simple. All you wanna do is take the cue and the reward and keep those the same, but change the routine. So let's say, for example, you're someone who has a little bit of a habit of reaching for candy or chocolate after lunch every single day, and you wanna break that habit. The cue in this case is that mid-afternoon hunger, and the reward might be both the sweet taste as well as kind of that midday energy boost you get from it. So all you wanna do is change the routine. So instead of reaching for chocolate, you might instead reach for some apple slices that you've dipped into a nut butter. It's sweet, it's filling, and it's rewarding. So you don't wanna resist the craving, you just wanna redirect it. And sure, it's not gonna be an easy substitute at first, but with repetition, it will become a habit and a snack choice that you do start to crave. The last of Charles Duhigg's points that I really wanna mention are what he calls keystone habits. These are the habits that if adopted or changed, kind of create a domino effect in other areas of our lives. For example, for some people, the habit of waking up early can have other positive effects on other habits. It can mean enjoying breakfast, which might then mean that they're gonna have a lesser tendency to reach for unhealthy, convenient foods later in the day. It might also give them the time to work on their most important tasks before noon, which then increases their productivity and feeling of accomplishment. Other keystone habits might be things like exercising or writing in a gratitude journal. You can see then how these keystone habits go on to influence a wider sphere of habits. It allows for small wins, that gives us more courage and motivation to pick up other healthy habits as well. Please keep in mind, 
This is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.